Okay, some of you may recognize this from a previous video, the Miller and Kressel Sound Corporation V2B subwoofer. The customer said it was working absolutely perfectly, and then all of a sudden, he's getting some distortion. So the first thing I noticed is it's pretty quiet in here right now. I just have a fan running that you can hear in the background. When I turn the power on, listen to this. It's definitely got a hum to it, a 60 hertz hum. Let's put some audio into it right now. And it's definitely got some distortion in the audio. So that's 25 hertz. So what happens if I take this up to 60 hertz? You hear that? I have it at like 62 hertz. It's just a little off frequency from the AC line coming in. And that's not very much audio. You can hear the phase actually changing. So, I want to make sure that the power supply is supplying adequate voltage into this unit. So I'm going to turn this down. I'll flip this back over where you can actually get to the board. I'll get a voltmeter out here. Hopefully you can still see it there. You still hear the 60 hertz hum in the background. So let's check DC voltage first. Okay, so these three leads right here are the power supply leads. The red is the positive, the black is common, and the white is the negative. So if I put my negative probe in the black lead down here and we check from the white to the black I have minus 38 volts if I check from the red to the black I only have 31 volts that is odd they should be pretty much balanced okay so let's do another check we'll go to AC and so black to white this is the negative supply I have 0 0.08 volts of ripple. And so if I go black to red, that's not good. I've got 5 volts of AC ripple with no audio coming in. Let's go ahead and give it a little bit of audio now. And if that number goes up, then I know I've got a problem in the power supply circuit. Oh yeah, 10 volts. And if you see, the meter is mimicking the distortion. So just for the heck of it, now that we've got some load on it, let's go ahead back to the other lead. And I see 0.3 volts. So I've definitely got a problem on the 35 volt positive supply. Just for the heck of it, let's see what it's actually doing. It's pulled down to 27 volts right now. Let's check the negative supply. It's staying pretty steady at 36 volts, which is where it should be. Oh, enough of that buzzing. It's buzzing in my head. But the problem I've got is when I go to AC volts, I should get basically zero volts right now, just like we have right here. 0.08 volts and 5 volts of AC ripple right there. So let's go ahead and pull the power supply board out of this unit. It's a really simple power supply. Okay, so here's a schematic of the power supply. It's just got a power transformer. Center tap reference to ground. It goes into a full wave bridge rectifier and then we go negative through a big filter cap to ground and positive through a big filter cap to ground. I'm going to bet one of these big filter caps is open. Well, obviously we know it's the positive side that's open. So let's go ahead and pull the power supply board out of this unit. 
Now, the rectifier and the filter caps come out separately and the transformer stays inside the unit. Okay, so here is the power supply board. That's all there is to it. A couple of big filter caps. There's really not much to it at all. And a bridge rectifier. And we have a surge suppressor, which is a resistor and a capacitor together. And so, look at these big filter caps right here. What are they? They are Nippon Chemicon. Those are pretty good capacitors. 7200 microfarad at 50 volts, and they are screw terminal capacitors. Let's get the ESR meter out and do a quick ESR check. Okay, as always, let's verify lead integrity. And we are at zero ohms. So first, let's check this one. I'm gonna go, doesn't matter what lead I put here on the common trace. And I get uh, about half an ohm. That's definitely bad for that size of a capacitor. Now let's go over here. I get nothing at all. Um, let's make sure the terminals are actually making contact on the circuit board. Good. And we'll check from this terminal to the trace. And we are good there. So yeah, that capacitor is absolutely open. So I'm gonna have to uh, go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and replace them both. Uh, don't know if I'm going to get Nippon Chemicons or another replacement brand. I might just get uh, Nichicons or Panasonics. They're all good quality capacitors. I definitely want to use a good quality capacitor in this uh, subwoofer. A very good customer of mine. So, yeah, that's it. Let's get some parts on order. And once they come in, we'll throw them in here. And hopefully that takes care of this problem. Okay, so things to be concerned about. Physical size, obviously. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this. Just a rough measurement is 35 millimeters in diameter. And then the overall height is 57 millimeters. And then I wanna go ahead and get the uh, spacing correct. Make sure the power is off when you do this. And it looks like about 12 millimeters is the spacing. Okay, let me go ahead and see if I can find some replacement capacitors with the proper specs. Okay, so the capacitor that I have chose to replace these with is a United Chemicon. It's a 10,000 microfarad at 50 volt. It is the same diameter, 35 millimeters, but the height on this one is 67 millimeters. So let me get this set at 67. That's close enough. So as you can see, it's going to be a little bit taller. It's probably 3 eighths of an inch taller than the original capacitor. But it's gonna be a higher capacitance. I think it's gonna serve well. I just couldn't find any 7200 microfarad capacitors available. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it with the 10,000. Uh, you can always go up in capacitance as long as you're not too terribly much. I actually considered a 15,000 microfarad because it was a 105 Celsius rated capacitor. But I think for this application, a 85 degrees Celsius capacitor is going to be just fine. So I'll get those on order and we'll finish this video once they arrive. Okay, so the parts have arrived. I've got a couple of 10,000 microfarad 50 volt capacitors from Nippon Chemicon, and they are the screw terminal type capacitors. And so let's go ahead and throw those into the subwoofer and see if we can get this thing up and running once again. Now I realize they're only 85 degrees Celsius capacitors, but this is not used in a switching power supply. They're only used in a full wave bridge rectifier supply at 60 hertz. So these should be perfectly adequate. And besides, they're the only thing I could really find that would fit in this application. So as you can see, the new ones are slightly taller than the old ones were, which I expected. I think that's gonna be fine. They are from the same manufacturer, however, so that should be okay. Let's take a look at the tops. 
you can see they all have the same pressure relief in the same place and they all have the positive in the same orientation so let's go ahead and put those on the board and we'll fire this baby up see if it works better they look like little surprise faces right now so let's go ahead and do a quick ESR test on them first I'm going to verify lead integrity and I'm going to zero out my meter there we go pretty close to zero first we'll check the old ones open and about three quarters of an ohm the new ones it should be absolutely zero at 10,000 microfarads and they are once again totally open and about three quarters of an ohm both definitely bad let's get the new ones installed okay got them all mounted at the board they use the same 1032 screws as the existing ones I made sure of that so I think we're going to be perfectly fine on this we'll go ahead and I got to remount this board back into the cabinet here and then we'll plug the subwoofer board back into it and fire it up put some audio test tones into it and make sure that it works okay okay well there it is mounted back in the unit so sorry about the audio quality but I'm shooting this on my cell phone I just have to put the sound deadening material back in and then we'll get this thing put all back together some of the deadening material is still in here but I have uh, all this back area right here is normally completely filled with the sound damping deadening material so we'll get it put back in here get this thing fired up and hopefully we get better results than last time so like I did on the subwoofer chassis that was sent in to me from New York I'm just gonna retension these leads just a little bit just to make a little bit better contact just gonna go ahead and squeeze them together just a little tiny bit That should do the trick. Now I'll go ahead and take care of this one male pin. I'll do the female on the circuit board as well. All right, it looks a little bit squished, but once the pin goes in there, it's gonna expand just fine. So that should be perfectly fine. All plugged on, ready to go. Plug the power cord back into it. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and fire it up with this unit out of the box. I can't really crank up the volume because it doesn't have the acoustic properties of a sealed enclosure at that point, but we'll give it a quick little test with the back open and then we'll seal it up and give it some full power tests. Okay, here we go. First power up with the new caps. Oh, and there's no hum whatsoever. Last time there was a slight hum in the background, probably because of bad caps. So I've got a 70 hertz signal going into it right now. Oh, it sounds good. No distortion at all at this point. All right, let's go ahead and put the rest of the sound dampening material back into it and we'll fire this baby up and put some power through it and see what happens. All right, here we go. There's 20 hertz with no distortion all the way up to the full power limit. Now this only has a one amp fuse in it. And right there is just over one amp. So let's kick it up to 30 hertz. Now it's gonna shake some stuff.
There's that one amp. There's 60 hertz. What, what you hear is the video lights rattling. Well, let's go ahead and put some actual audio into it now and see what it sounds like. Well, there it is. Certainly shaking everything. Anyhow, there it is, all repaired. Just needed a couple capacitors replaced in it in the power supply. The thing sounds excellent. I think this customer is going to be very happy. So at this point, I once again want to give a thank you to those who have supported my channel with a donation via PayPal or by having me repair your unit like this one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, once again, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, once again, thanks for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Bye-bye.